Let's have a look at how we can use lambda expressions as method arguments. Because at this point, you may wonder, why is this instructor so thrilled about lambda expressions? And you'd be right, we haven't seen yet how this can be helpful. It's not as if we were implementing interfaces in our code constantly before. We will soon see a new style of programming, functional programming. And lambda expressions are commonly used in functional programming. The key lies in that lambda expressions can be used as input for a method. This allows us to inject dynamic functionality. When a method requires a parameter of a specific functional interface, a lambda expression can be passed as an argument. In this method, the lambda function can be executed. This is going to make what this method does very flexible, since its functionality depends on its input which is a lambda expression, and it can be implemented in multiple ways. So let's look at how to use lambda expressions as method input arguments, allowing us to inject dynamic functionality. So here's our main method again. And as you can see, we have multiple calculators implemented. So what I'm going to create right now is a static method, because I don't want to create an instance of main, so I can say public static int, and I'm going to call this execute. And in here, I'm going to say it requires some parameters, number one, number two, and this is where it becomes interesting, some implementation of the calculator interface. And then I'm going to say that this is going to return the result of calculator.calculate, and you can guess it, number one and number two as input arguments. So what does this method do? Well, it executes the implementation of the Lambda method that's provided. That means it can do anything. So let's go ahead and create an int result one. And that's going to be execute with, well, let's go with three and five again. And let's pass in calculator one. I'm going to make an int result two. Execute with three and five again, and now pass in C2. Make an int result three. Execute three, five, and then C3. Well, I mean, I did this in the last video, so let's have a quick look at the C1, C2, and C3. So here's C1, X and Y becomes X plus Y. So it's pretty much adding three and five. C2, it's subtracting three and five. And C3, which is in line nine to 12, it's going to first print something and then return a result of X times Y. The only reason it's doing that is because we want to demonstrate that we need curly brackets around more than one statement in your Lambda expression. All right, so let's print the three results. So here I'm going to say result one plus a space plus result two plus a space plus result three. And let's run this code. And you'll see that even though three and five are the same, the results are going to be different because C1, C2 and C3 are doing different things. So you can see the hello from the Lambda expression is being printed, but it ends with eight, which is the addition, negative two, the subtraction, and 15, the multiplication. So let's go over it once more. In this example, we have used the calculator. So let's go over it once more. So we have implemented the calculator functional interface. We did this already in the last video with C1, C2, and C3. The single abstract method is calculate. So we use these three created Lambda expressions on line five, six, and nine to 11 to go ahead and call the method execute. And execute is taking three input parameters, a number, another number, and some sort of instance of the calculator interface. Instead of going ahead and creating a class that's going to be implementing calculator and passing an instance of that in, which would have also been valid, we use a Lambda expression. So without Lambda expressions, we would have to do something like this. Let me show you. 
call this calculator implementation. It's going to implement calculator. And in order to implement calculator, I of course need to override the calculate function. And taking two parameters, I'm going to stick with the naming conventions, but I could have called them X and Y or C and D or just whatever. And well, let's actually do a, a division here because that's fun. Pick one extra option again. So now A and B is going to be A divided by B. Actually, that's a bit dangerous for integers, but oh well. So instead of calling it like this, I could also now create a result for that is going to be execute. 3, 5. And then here we're just going to say new calculator implementation. And this would be valid as well. But as you can see, this is a lot more hassle than just quickly doing this with a lambda expression, which I'm going to do in just a second. I'm going to add result 4 here. And run it again. And as you can see, it's now 8, negative 2, 15, and 0. And the reason it's 0 and not something more sensible is that I said, hey, this is a bit dangerous. And that's because we do integer division right now. It does some casting. This topic is not for now, which is not to be careful with that. Sometimes this is actually exactly what you want to do. Other times it results into funky bugs. So I'm going to say result 5. I'm going to do the exact same thing as I just did with the calculator implementation, but now on the fly with a lambda expression. So instead of creating a lambda expression up there, I'm going to do what we commonly do, and that's implement it on the fly right here. Oh, so I actually called A and B right now, but I'm going to call it X and Y, and not because it matters at all, because just because I know that beginners might think, oh, I need to stick to certain naming conventions. Uh, no, you don't. That's the main thing. I'm doing it like this. There you go. So this is actually how we typically use it. So we just pass in the lambda on the fly directly. We don't create it, and well, sometimes we do, but we typically don't create it and assign it to a variable, but we just pass it in on the fly. And, oh, actually, stop. And let's add the result here, and then run the method again. So now there's going to be two zeros at the end. And there's a result. So this is how we can inject different behaviors into the execute method. And we do this with Lambda expressions, but as I just showed you, we could also do this by creating a class that implements the interface. However, commonly we do this with Lambda expressions. So now that we've seen how we can use these Lambda expressions to implement functional interfaces and how we can use these as input for methods, there's one more thing I'd like to mention about lambda expressions, and that's related to its scope. Let's have a look at this in the next video.